In the last video, I explained that each function call saves the state of the function, including the values of its local variables, in a chunk of memory called a stack frame. Now, if you're not clear on what a stack frame or the call stack is, be sure to go back and watch that video before watching this one. Now, when recursion unwinds, that is, as one recursive function call exits and we return to the scope of the code that called it, that's the previous function call or stack frame, we lose the values of the variables in the function call that we just exited. The stack frame uh, vanishes, in effect, and everything is lost. Because once the function exits, the stack frame is removed from the stack. But often we want to save the values, calculated values, inside a function. And so we don't want to lose all the values of local variables through the process of unwinding of recursion. For example, if we're counting the files, say, in a directory and all the subdirectories underneath it, and we're using recursive function calls to do that, well, we don't want to lose the total count as the recursion unwinds. So the question is, how can we save the values of local variables? Now, essentially, there are two ways. One, we could declare a, a, local, a global variable, rather, beyond the scope of the recursive functions, and then add the values from each recursive function call to that variable. And that's, uh, you can see that I've done that here. I've declared the int variable total, and it's outside the recursive function call. The recursive function is called uh, some recursion. Now, you don't need to understand all the details of this particular piece of code. I'm just putting this here as a, a simple example to show one way of saving the values from recursive function calls. So that's my way here, is by adding the, the values uh, calculated to this uh, global, to this variable that's declared outside the scope of the recursive function call. Now, the important thing to notice here is that the values of the local parameter, that's n here, and uh, that parameter, and the local int uh, variable new num, well, they are going to be, uh, uh, they're going to change as recursion occurs, um, but as the function exits, as each recursive function call exits, their values will be lost. But I've by having this var uh, variable total, well, when I calculate the values uh, through each recursive function call, that value total saves the sum of the values, and it retains the value even when recursion unwinds. There's another way of doing it. Here's another program, very similar to the previous one, but this time there is no total variable declared outside the scope of the function. Instead, I've got this local variable called total. Now, uh, what happens here is that the uh, value calculated inside the function is returned as the return value of that function. Now, in some ways, using a return value like this, is neater than declaring a global variable, but it's also a bit harder to understand. So you have to understand that this value is returned to the function call um, itself, so the function call is recursive, and so uh, when it returns the value, that returned value is added to the local variable, uh, variable total. <sighs> Now, this is one of the problems with recursion, trying to sort out uh, how each recursive function call has its own state, and that is really confusing. But, as always, if you find this hard to understand, how recursive functions work, um, how local variables and return values operate when some recursion, this function here, calls itself some recursion. So when some recursion calls some recursion calls some recursion, if that is really difficult to understand, try thinking of what would happen if these were three different function calls. So that say a function called some recursion one called a function named some recursion two, and that called a function 
named some recursion 3. Now, as explained in the last video, recursive function calls work just the same way as regular function calls. Now, keep that idea, the idea of stack frames, uh, one for each function call, keep that idea in your mind at all times when working with recursion. So remember that each time a function is called, a new block of memory is set aside to store the function state. And that is the same for recursive function calls as for any regular function call. Now, I know this is really hard to understand if you are fairly new to recursion, but get that idea, that idea of stack frames, and go back and review the previous video if you need to, that idea of stack frames firmly in your mind and try to remember that recursive function calls work essentially in just the same way as regular function calls.